So game two is now, right? Yeah. Okay. I think that was too much, a bit too much. Okay guys, this is game 2 of semi -final, first semi-finals of our Flipkart Gaming Online Championship and it's going to be infamous against C-Squack, our gaming partners are alien there. And yeah, let's get into it. We're going to pick him back, so it's going to be Echo and Rice banned again. So yeah, I think um, the teams are going to stick to what they banned last game because most of those bands to me seem like uh, more of a target ban rather than something which counters their compositions. So yeah, there's your Swain again. And definitely that Azir ban coming in, you won't allow Sam to be on that nuisance anymore. They've learned their lesson. Yeah, I don't think they're, they're gonna let last season, yeah. It's uh, it has been bad. Don't think they're gonna pick up uh, Malzahar again too, cause it didn't really do what it was supposed to do last game, cause the Malzahar pick and didn't really help Cheese quite much. Yeah, he did uh, have uh, equal laning, if you would uh, say that, but that too was not uh, for 7 or 8 minutes, because Sam had a huge CS lead on Azir. And they banned Thresh, and they're scared of Sam instantly picking the Thresh, he's known to do that, but they pick up that Kindred instead, much contested pick. And yeah. That was like really fast lock-ins there. It's gonna be Sivir and Skarner. We haven't seen much Skarner throughout this tournament, but he has been doing a lot uh, in uh, in solo queue games, and you do also have the Sivir to speed up the Skarner there. And Fizz, oh, so I think that was some kind of technical issue there. We will be, yeah, oh, okay. So apparently it seems like it was a bug. I was really surprised to see it like that quick of a lock 
in there. So yeah, it's going to be remade, I guess. It it would be seeing bands and different things. So yeah, guys, uh, that was a blind bug there. The champions got the auto lock. And so it, it would be same bands and Kindred would be picked and on the side of C Squack it's going to be like new uh, picks uh, for them. So we are waiting for X Nobody to come and um, we'll be live in game uh, in a few minutes. Okay guys, we are back in the champ selecting. It's going to be the same bands and Kindred would be first pick. But other than that, it's going to be different picks because last time we had champions being auto-locked by the clan. So, yeah, pretty much same uh, bands coming out. Swain, Morgana, and Echo, and Rice, Azir, and Thresh on the side of C-Sky. And it's going to be a Kindred locked in first. So yeah, since it is not the Skarner pick which got me really excited, I am I'm now wondering what these guys are gonna pick up. Well, if he does pick up that Kha'Zix, it won't be shocking because Soul Reaper, um, Soul Reaper's most played champion is Kha'Zix. He loves to fall back to that Kha'Zix again and again. So he that might be just a Kha'Zix pickup. I'm not sure if it's strong against a Kindred though, but Kha'Zix is definitely in the meta and is definitely quite strong. Uh, Lantern denying denying that a Nami. To, from Sam picking it up instead. Um, let's see if he's able to uh, bring out the Nami potential because uh, the rain support is truly a different meta. Okay. Mm, so I, I'm actually wondering if the Krakos champion pool has some issues or something because Lantern he bans out the Thresh and picks up Nami, which, uh, which was picked up by Krakos last game. So maybe it's out of a target ban there i'm not really sure on that uh, or else i don't see it as uh, being uh, being op or something where you need to ban it out well Cranko uh, is known to be a nuisance thresh player he's known to be a nuisance nami player so both of them getting banned out and uh, the the worst part about this thing this whole scenario is Cranko has one of the hugest champion pools as a support i've seen so banning him doesn't really make sense he can even now fall back to that Brom, uh, fall back to that Soraka or uh, maybe an Alistair so 
let's see if all of this trouble was worth it yeah as i said you, you don't actually ban up thresh unless your enemy support has a really small champion pool so that that was that's a questionable decision there for me but then again maybe they don't want a thresh on the opposite side where he could save the sarah using his lantern and disengage with the box maybe and silver has been picked up by quinelzi uh, and will it be a maokai lock in yeah it, it is a maokai lock yeah, they, they, they are they definitely not letting the maokai go through cluster hovering yeah. over that pantheon if he picks it up it would be really interesting yeah fast pantheon you could destroy the maokai again cause it's going to be really hard if you're maokai against a pantheon or else or, he could drop to go for gangplank it's or also good pick if you ask me just hit barrels on your face all day. oh wait uh fizz has already been locked in so it's most probably going to be a top lane fizz unless sam wants uh, wants to play blind i'm not sure on that i don't think you should blind pick this but then again it's sam that we are talking about and fizz is again currently in the meta but a tf howard upon so a tf no that's an ideal pick up so yeah uh I so it, it's going gonna to be up. sam on fist most probably yeah it's sam unless he wants to play i dare mid no this this is not going to be an ideal mid uh sam will be on that fist um and like i said fizz is so in the current meta right now uh he can be destructive and a kain coming in uh that's pretty interesting argus is known to play kain and uh, with that ultimate the kain can be a huge nuisance Okay, so both teams have some assassin and anti-assassin qualities to them. Cheese crack with Kha'Zix and Kael, and Infamous with Fizz and Kindred. So it's going to be more on how your assassins are going to play around the protective abilities of your opponents. I think this game would be really interesting to watch here. And plus, uh, like he has a weird, weird summoner set picked up right now. I just got to go for the flash. They they are just trying. I don't know if it's going to be a mid lane fizz or mid lane are there yet. Let's just wait wait for them to lock in. If it's a mid lane fizz with a teleport and an ignite, this game is just going ham. Okay, so Whoa. last moment switch in there. It's going to be Sam on either there. Sam on either there and glass down fizz. What the hell is going on here? And uh, Yeah. And and he and cluster is there with a teleport and an ignite so he is just going to be so aggressive in his lane yeah if you are a top lane fizz you are most likely going to go for teleport and ignite you don't see my most fizz is picking up flash in the top lane it's going to be similar to hecarim where you are going to be so aggressive and try to pick up kills and uh, yeah and i didn't really expect sam to pick up uh, a mid lane area there maybe he wanted to swap it around for for the fist match up you, you don't want to play fist into kill most of the time cuz she's well going to be able to bully fist uh, pre level 6 with her rage and in post level 6 it, it's going to get hard to kill her with her but uh, yeah she can just nullify the fist's ultimate with her ultimate and the fist has pretty much nothing else to do there Yeah, uh, but Irelia really, on the other hand, yes, she tends to be kind of bursty, but still she has a lot of sustained damage, and she tends to do well against range matchups. So it's going to be really interesting to watch this game. In this game, uh, in um, in particular, cause a lot of bursty team fight split pushing and like like protective ultimates where you could save your team fight and uh, I mean teammates. So yeah, it's going to be really fun to watch. And oh. Uh... It's pretty interesting to see uh, them running the double teleport comp uh, with a fizz and an Irelia. It can be a huge nuisance, and uh, it can be a disadvantage also because um, fizz is not as what do you say a conventional tank. But uh, Glasta will be building a tank. Will be going a bit tanky on him. Yeah, he, he, you could build a tanky on him. But most players they prefer to go for a triforce or a vision, and then for tanky items, he's not going to be similar to a maokai. 
where he's going to be tanky right from the start. You don't see Mark Rice putting Afghan items anymore. So, it, uh, on the side of Infamous, it's going to be more about winning their lanes and trying to split push and create pressure all around, all around the map because you do have a Jin and you have uh, your Kindred to put a, like for some protection. So it's going to be more on the hands of the solo liners to like take this hand in. And they're running. And Quake, they do have a strong team fight composition there. Yep, and Cheese Quake is running double exhaust. So uh, that is going to be a factor in those major team fights. Uh, because when you have two of your opponents exhausted, their damage has been reduced considerably, uh, it becomes a nuisance. Yeah, like I said, Chief Quake, they have a really good team fighting team there. They have like suitable summoners to go with it. And also they have the Sibir and Nami who are like super good at team fights. And also Kale. Okay, like, like uh, it's going to be hard to single out an enemy uh, target when you have, you have a kill on the enemy team. So yeah, standard summoners, uh, I mean, uh, Keystone Mastery so far. Nothing new, like what you saw last, last game with the Storm Raider, so it's glad in there. Hmm. So yeah, guys, we'll be loading into the game pretty soon. It's going to be game two of a best of three series. Infamous versus C Squack. Infamous is in the lead. They have taken down and taken over game one, and this is game two. I really want like, like I kind of want C uh, Squack to take this game because we would get a game three off of it that way. Because two ones are way better for viewers than two O's. But if you if you look at the keystones over here, Irelia and Fizz are both running forward. So they are both planning on being super, super aggressive in the lane. Yeah, Perm is really good if you are able to take uh, take on those like extended trades where you will be able to stack up your Perm and you are going to be dealing an insane amount of damage. Both Irelia and Fizz, they are capable of doing that because they can stick to their targets. Yeah, pretty standard corruption potion starts there by both. And... Um, I'm not entirely convinced with Soul Reaper starting on uh, the Hunter's Talisman if he wants to start off with the blue. I think he should have gone with the Machete because it gives you more survival if you're going the blue path. But uh, let's see how it progresses. Yeah, it might work. Uh, but the thing is, like, yeah, if you're going to start blue, uh, you could pick up Machete. Uh, but l let's say he decides to go for a coffee with raw hammer instead of upgrading his jungle item. That way, when when his blue does run out, he's gonna have that extra bit of ma mana region which you desperately need on Kaze. So it's not really that bad of a uh, pickup, if you ask me. Where is a Kha'Zix you uh, can be very flexible that way? So. Uh yeah, it is not that big of a deal early game, but okay. uh, let's see uh, if he decides to go for that Warhammer instantly. Okay, so both junglers, they did, they are deciding to start a war on the bot side, so it's going to be more emphasis on, on the top lane, because both junglers, they are going to pass towards the top lanes. And you, you're going to expect to see some early ganks trying to uh, snowball one top lane or over the other. That way, like, if you uh, manage to get Maokai ahead, you will not get destroyed by Fizz. And that's something really huge, because if you're Fizz, you want to win your lane. And if you notice something over here, nobody doesn't start with the three Raptors, which is a huge mistake. Well, I don't know, maybe he just wanted, uh, like, he wanted to get his Arcane Smash level on for aggressive traits, like he is doing now. Like you said, it is a bit of a decision making there. And Cranko starting to deal that damage at level 2. Will they be able to take down Gwyn LG? A f summoner, both summoners burn on Gwyn LG, and uh, an exhaust being burned on the lantern so uh, all in all it's a positive trade none summoners to three 
Yeah, three for none from the trade. Infamous, that, that, that is a good early advantage to have. And the mark of Kindred, it has spawned over on the bot side. Okay. And this card, he is level 3, he did decide to play out the entire bottling quadrant of the jungle. And there you go, solo kill onto cl Cluster. And nobody... That's a good start for him, especially on a matchup which is so volatile. Yep. Teleport has been used by Cluster now. If Soul Reaper does manage to get a gank off now and like try to get Cluster to base again, it's gonna be really huge for nobody there. Okay, so Teleport being burnt on the side of C's collective. Yep, and um, Cluster still trading blows with nobody. And he might just pick up a kill on nobody, but that level that up saved That level up them. saved him there. That level up saved him there. That level up definitely saved nobody there. But yeah, the yeah, risk nobody, He didn't actually uh, like keep an eye on the enemy wave. Like he fought in the middle of a huge wave there. That was his mistake there. And yeah, like a, like I did mention that uh, Maka is doing, doesn't go for... Oh. So that's a kill on to plus I think. Yep, and that's a double kill for Ripcord. So okay. uh, Ripcord starts to snowball again. That got out of hand real fast. Uh, it's not uh, like still C Strike does have their lead. They have and Crank uh, has to like flash out, but he, still, he will fall down. Fury uh, might just go down, but no, he gets off. Safe. Okay, so. So there's tons of action all around the map. You don't even get time to talk about the previous one. So hmm, it's gonna be a pretty interesting match, I guess, so far as I see. Both teams, uh, it's only like a hundred gold uh, uh, difference at this moment. So this game is still in um, uh, like this game is still even. Game is still pretty even, and Sam going aggressive. Cluster coming in with that gank, exhaust burn, and a flash burn. So, all in all, you got both summoners. This should be an easy lift for Sam for now. Yeah, Kale, she doesn't have much mobility except for the moment sweet buff set that she gets from her heal. So, Ripcord, I think he's gonna be looking to for a re gank, a revisit to the mid lane pretty, pretty soon. And as I was saying, X nobody. I think he's going for a lot of pages. It it could still be the uh, righteous uh, righteous crew, but I think it's gonna be the lot of pages there. Sam gets caught under the tower. Will they be able to chase him down? I think Sam might be going down. Or yeah, yeah, he goes down. goes down. Things not looking good for uh, INF right now. Sam was really aggressive back then. Like, he did look to die with Kale. And X nobody goes like, deep on Cluster and will pick him up. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. If you manage to get your Maokai ahead in this Twist matchup, it's gonna be a real hard time for the first cause. He needs to be ahead to win a lane and he needs to win a lane to have an impact. Rip oh, Ripcord catches him. Here. And he will get a free kill here. Okay, there you go. That, that. I think uh, nobody there here, like X nobody. He was he was a bit hasty to recall. He should have tried to go into the bush before he started his recall. Yeah, that, that wasn't a uh, smart move. And Cranko uh, trying to land that bind, but uh, he won't be able to. And uh, pretty much standard stuff going on here, except Sivir has that BF sword. Which is given her the Okay, so Fury back. is gonna go for the Ghost Blade build on to Jen. Pretty interesting to see. You're gonna have a lot of armor then. And you you still do get your crit from your fourth shot. So I don't 
know how this will works exactly because I haven't tried it yet. But theoretically, it sounds good because uh, Ghostblade is going to give you the much mobility that you need. Oh, okay, guys, it's going to be a pause here and on the side of the C spec. Maybe it's technical issues, like it might be internet issues, or as always. Hope to see it unfold soon. And yeah, back to Jin. He's going to get a lot of armor pen and much needed mobility from this book. So, really, well, it's going to be interesting to watch what he does with it. So yeah, there has been a DC on the side of cheese pack and we will be resuming pretty soon. Okay guys, we're back into the game. And yeah, Blue being my hand over to kill. Hmm. This game has been a, like, it has been super fast paced. And there has been action all over the map here. Yeah. Yep, uh, and uh, nobody st has still, uh, Cluster has still managed to keep up with the CS, even though nobody is ahead on the kill goal. And the well, to be honest, both of them are a bit down in CS with all the trading and stuff. Because whenever no, like uh, Clasta gets killed, nobody has to be a base too. So CS, uh, like I said, has been even. Hey, wake up! And that's a blood razor picked up by Kindred. Okay. So. Hmm. Top lane has been frozen against Pasta and Soul Reaper, he might be making his way towards the top lane pretty soon. Mm, I'm not sure if Ripcord uh, has sensed this. Oh, okay, so that was my bad. The wave is now pushing towards Pasta, so he will be in a good spot pretty soon. Yep, and Pasta uh, should be able to take down the wave under the turret. Soul Reaper going for the red buff. Uh, wards, pretty standard wards, though you see INF has warded the entire bot river, so they have a lot of control over that dragon right now. Yeah, tons of uh, like wards being coming by INF in the fry bush, and even Scuttler has been picked up. So I think they want to get this dragon super early because Ocean Dragon, oh, a teleport being used on to IF. Oh, and, and that's a yeah, flash W there by X Nobody. Uh, Plasta coming in from behind. Sam also following up. Uh, Sam will pick up a kill on the lantern. Uh, and that's an ulti coming in from Jin. Uh, nobody will block it. And Jin, he won't be able to block Blast Shot. Uh, Franco taking in a lot of damage. Cluster kiting beautifully, and uh, it's just a kill fest. But the Jin gets so many kills. The Jin gets three kills. Argus coming in down after the fight. For God knows what, getting caught out, and uh, he has to burn his flash over here. But Ripcord okay, will follow up. Ripcord will follow up and pick up the kill. And, uh, okay, so that got uh, like uh, that was uh, your regular party in the bot lane that you see. And Ripcord, he does have four kills now. Both uh, infamous as AD carries or marksmen, uh, Kindred and Jin, they have all the kills that they have at this moment. So yeah, it's going to be on to them if they want to deal proper damage. Yep, and they'll take this dragon undetected. Okay, that was really good there, cause Ocean Dragon is super strong in the mid game, mid, mid game where the health and mana region is gonna matter a lot. Uh, in late game team fights, it's, it's gonna be super fast paced, and we don't get much time to use the region. So mid game is where Ocean Dragon shine, and picking it up a bit early is really good for him. Well, cluster. Actually, didn't land that ulti on nobody, but nobody went, walked into it, and now uh, he will be bursted down. 
Soul Reaper coming in and he will be picked up as well. So another huge misplay by Cheese Quick. Yeah, Infamous, they're really good with their rotations uh, in this game. Because they managed to get, get to the land, get, get to where it matters uh, faster than Cheese Quick. As you could see, Samus has been roaming around a lot uh, compared to Argus. So, yeah, that, that, that is really well played by Infamous. Eh? Yeah, that's very true. Um, the gold, however, is pretty uptight, up close right now. Uh, there's not much, only 1k between these two teams. So, Infamous, they want to tank this tower. Will they be able to get it? Uh, yeah, Lamps yeah. Uh, Ripcord has been blown there. Ripcord blows Rams' despite to just take down the turret. And uh, that will yeah. give Cluster some breathing space up top. So Plasma, he does have his arc too. Will he be able to uh, like stack it up? Uh, that's, uh, that's the question here, because he has three stacks at the moment. But you do lose a lot of stacks if you die. Yep, but um, he, he is pretty confident. He's had uh, successful ganks coming in. And uh, that's just a uh, support item basically like it just helps you with the stats uh, and uh, Sam getting caught there Sam might be get taken down here Ripcord uh, oh, yeah Ripcord is able to get Sam out there beautiful brain there used by Sam Ripcord uh, will get on to nobody Cluster getting pounced upon and Cluster will fall down to Soul Reaper Ripcord will also fall down the Soul Reaper picking up a double kill on that Kha'Zix, uh, which is something to worry about. Yeah, this game has been going back and forth nearly a lot of times. Like Both teams have been trading a lot of uh, kills back and forth. And yeah, both junglers, they do have a hefty amount of gold. So it's going to be up to them from this point to get, get their respective teams on to the league. And, and uh, I'm really up. interested to see who they uh, decide to give the buff over. Okay, he it's gonna be on to KL now. Meanwhile, uh, they steal a blue buff. So denying KL uh, at least one buff over here. Well, KL is not one of those champions who are really blue buff reliant. So it's not gonna hurt her that much. Especially now that she has the glimpse of the void buff. So, but then again, uh, a blue buff won't hurt if you have it on your team. Yep, and they are trying to nibble down on the bottom turret. Uh, a very nice bubble landed there, but... Uh... Okay, there's an ulti popped by Quinn LG. Uh, three people coming, but uh, ulti popped up by Nami. Uh, will it hit anybody? No. And okay, a really good disengage by Cranko. And so far, like I said, the, this game is still anyone's game to take. Because it's only uh, a 1k gold differential, differential at uh, like what, 15 minutes. That's not uh, much of a thing to get there. Any team can take this game at this moment. Yup, um, and uh, Kindred building towards that Runans. He wants that wave clear to come up in as fast as possible. <laughs> and also, if you're Kindred, you you have a lot of percentage health damage, which is considered on it. Like with your blood racer and also with uh, with your mark of the Kindred stack. So Runans. Since it applies uh, on it effects fully, it's gonna be it's a really efficient item to buy on Kindred. Yep, and Soul Reaper coming in, uh, flashing in to take down Sam. Uh, Sam trying to turn it around. Oh, almost takes down Argus. Argus flashes there. Beautiful. Play okay, there. so two flashes being blown by uh, in exchange for uh, Sam's uh, life. So. Uh, is it worth? I don't know. Well, they did get a kill on a 3-2-3 three, three Irelia, so I think it's worth it. Yeah, if they, if they manage to push down mid lane tower, it's going to be really good for Cheesequake here. Uh, 
they've got your beautiful snare landed uh, cluster from behind dealing damage to Soul Reaper uh, but he just underestimates the damage a uh, Kazakian burst down uh, Fury picking up a kill on Soul Reaper and uh, they were unable to push the mid turret But yeah, in fact, they are looking to, to take out the mid tower now again. That was, a, yeah, it was a one for a zero trade, but uh, it's like they did lose a lot of HP and a lot of uh, their members were forced to back. And you look, Sam going to bot and being so aggressive on Severus as the front line. And they did take down the mid turret. Uh, Fury will push them behind with that ultimate. <coughs> so Sam, I think he's gonna go for a pseudo tanky build. Where I think it's gonna be the strat net. He's gonna be dealing a lot of damage and being relatively tanky as well. Okay, and uh, uh, Infernal Drake just goes down uncontested because of the lack of vision. Should they engage over here? I don't think they they will be able to catch up for. Uh, yeah, they, uh, in Infamous, they do have a good amount of disengage with uh, Kama. And also, the Dragon Control so far in the series has been really spectacular by Infamous. They know when they could uh, like sneak in a Dragon or two. So, yeah. This guy, uh, they'll be able to get, get done with mid turret the next thing, so. Yeah. So yeah, it's around 2.5k gold lead at 18 minutes, it's still anyone's game to take. It's gonna depend a lot on like the skirmishes and team fights that are gonna follow from now on. And it's Kale, a pretty close game, it's a pretty close game. Let's get a quick silver sash there. So August, he doesn't want to get uh, stunned up by Irelia, I guess. Because nothing else is like pure uh, Sabo. You can't uh, like uh, cleanse out the earth uh, like let's out this is ultimate anymore so it's gonna be solely for for Irelia's turn there yeah. yeah but for Irelia's turn and Karma's uh, snare and I don't see anything else maybe a snare from uh, Jin, but nothing else and Cluster going in uh, will force out a flash smart play there will block out right now So Fury on this channel, I think it's going to be an SNC one next because oh. I don't think anything else builds off of an hammer and a BF spot. Hmm, Ghost played into SNC Reaver there. And Sam split pushing. Oh my god, so much damage dealt to Argus. And Argus replying back slowly but steadily. Okay, so that's the split push game that I've been talking about. And if a fight does manage to break out now, Sam can join him because he has the teleport. But Argus, he did go for an exhaust, so... There, it's a teleport mismatch on the top lane at this moment. Yep, and... Uh, top being pushed so far. Bot is getting pushed so far uh, Cheesequake has to find out a way to counter this or pick up a fight uh, because they are losing out on a lot of gold in the XP Yeah, Cheesequake being uh, pressured on uh, two lanes at this moment mm, they do have a decent amount of wave clear with Sivir and if Kill does manage to hold her own against either there, it won't be a problem for CSK and Quake anytime soon. But if you look at Irelia, she's just going for that split push. Yeah, Sam, he does have his teleport up, so he can afford to like and leave his team with And caught up, he will be brought to shreds. Cluster uh, will be saved by the Ram despite Sam coming in. Picking up double, picking up triple, picking up a quadra, and that's an ace. What a disaster! That Jeez, so that's what I was talking about. As soon as the team fight uh, uh, like breaks out, 
Sam can instantly teleport in there and like there like that there, you can't do anything against it. Like your your enemy I realize she has seven kills now, it's gonna be really hard for you. But so, first things first, they shouldn't have taken so much time on bursting down Fury. I mean the Maokai lost almost one fourth of his HP by the time Fury died. And things went downhill from there. Sam just coming in and uh, starting to wreck everybody. So yeah, now from this point on, uh, I think C-Squirt now has to try to kite in the following team fights. So, and they need to save the exhaust for Sam because else he's going to be able to kill their entire team from now. He has a if they room. like manage to kite back and use scale properly, so Chitwak uh, can take uh, take team fight from now on. But it has to be played properly now. Yup, that's very true. He has the blade of the rune king, as you said. He is going that pseudo tank build, and uh, nobody getting caught up there. Uh, Ripcord will land a CC, and they will take him down. Soul Reaper going in middle. Uh, he might take down Cluster. No. Uh, yup. Clasta takes down Soul Reaper, Quinn LG will be able to take down Clasta. Sam meanwhile takes down uh, Kill and Fury will so, kill Quinn LG. So again... This game has been going around real fast for like for the past 2 or 3 minutes. Sam will he be able to take down Landon? I think he so. He does have a lot of movement speed now. Yep, he will yeah, be he able. does manage to catch up. So and that's another race. race. Things are just going downhill for Cheese Quick right now. The game in which they had a chance, they had the perfect picks, they had the perfect setup. They're just throwing it straight up right now. I won't even say it's bad luck, they're just throwing it. They are just being out of position, getting caught, and they're just throwing the game right now. Yeah, I don't think, like, mm, I don't think it was intended. Um, it was, to, it might have just been like, uh, questionable shot calling right there from C-Square cause yeah you did lo lose a team fight but you you should be able to regroup as soon as possible do, like don't just walk in randomly towards Baron try to uh, like try to plan and ahead that's what you're gonna do the second infernal ray going down uh, Soul Reaper will though try and contest it Cluster fails on that uh, tumble but the Lambs Respite will save them Ripcord uh, beautifully tumbling out Sam coming in now, uh, picking up one kill, picking up the other kill, he will fall down, uh, Kale gets the shutdown goal, Ripcord coming in, he will pick up a kill on Queen LG, and that's another ace! Hey, okay, there you go, another ace comes in point, I, must. I think they, they could take down an Inductor, they do have uh, the time required. Jeez, Queen mm. can't seem to catch a break. It was one of the most perfect setups in a fight. Uh, there, uh, they did well, decide it, to go. It's just a time. lot of damage coming out of Ripcord and Fury, and also Sam. He's been wrecking the past two or three team fights here. Yep, and they will take down the inhibitor easily before going back. So, uh, does it look like the series is going to nil? Okay, so in famous, they the game it was pretty even uh, for like 25 hours or so minutes, but now it has been wide open. Cheese Crack, they need to turtle it out because in famous, they know they what they're doing. Like uh, like the past two or three team fight, it has been beautifully executed by Infamous right there. Yup, and uh, Fury has uh, his set of power spike items. Uh, same as Civil, but uh, if you see the gold difference and the farm difference on an Irelia and Kale, that's massive. Irelia is yes. so far ahead. Sam is going to be the name of the game from this point, I would assume, because the mere threat that he's been posing on the backline of Seasquack has been uh, leading them to make questionable decisions during team fights, because as you can see, Cheese Quack, they're as a team, they're not moving in similar uh, positions because half of them are trying to get to the back line of Infamous oh, while the Sam other half runs away. Oh, and Sam goes on Quinn LG. It's not possible. He then. will pick up that kill. Uh, meanwhile, Soul, he does ulti Soul Reaper. Sam coming back on the minion. Uh, 
Nami burning an ultimate and it's a beautiful disengage. Uh, Ripcord coming in, dealing in damage. So much damage. He might take down next nobody and yes he does. Uh, Argus gets focused on, Argus will be picked up uh, and they are going deep in. Lantern will be the next. Uh, Kha'zix will be the only one to survive and this might just be the game. Yeah, that might be the uh, game and series uh, for Infamous. Like, we didn't expect this to go down to this fast either. But yeah, Infamous, they will be and taking the uh, taking the first semifinals of Flipkart uh, online gaming tournament, I guess. Yeah, so they are taking really the first well semifinals. Really well played there, but Flipkart, I, I mean, Infamous, because uh, the game was even to, uh, till around 23, 24 minute marks, and, and they do it wide open, like. And that was a really fast uh, game right there for Infamous and well done. So, the winner of our first semi-finals will be Infamous guys will be returning to you with the semi and second semi-final pretty soon. Till then, thank you. Signing off is Mid Preferred and Anthracite and we will see you in the stream shortly for uh, EDX's matchup. Do tune in guys.